profit's been paying off for Kira. Sepulger at level 6 is going to be taking a greedy build, not going for Stone Gaze, and I agree with this because you really need to get that farm. Kira stepping out towards it, Mana Shield goes up level 1, not going to do too much, but Kira not willing to be aggressive onto there and look for those soul assumptions. Miriam Weebster in the area, but just farming up. We're not going to see him until at least level 6. One of the things to note that's a little interesting about the uh, mid builds, by the way, is the fact that the AM has taken three points in Counterspell, and I'm trying to decide whether I like that or not here. I think the part of it is I like the magic resistance that it affords versus the storm. The only thing it's really going to affect in terms of direction is if he goes for that electric vortex, and you have to read it because it's almost instant cast time. Mm -hmm. But the passive mag magic resist is super important. And Anti-Mage is leading the game in farm at the moment. Kira in the top lane trying to move on to beat a little bit. Soul Assumption's going to fade, but the Grave Chill able to get a little bit of her ass out. Devirus has no Metamorphosis for two seconds, but ready to move in and possibly go on to Sepulger. Um, again, with neutered as well, neither team able to use neutral items. Spectre carrying the trusty shovel needs to pocket that. Also, recall that Radiant has to block two of their uh, camps at this point with sentries. Oh, that is right. It is NA Dota. Also, ah, oh, we have a foul. Uh, yeah, that's a extreme foul using the shovel, using the active even. Seven gold. As well. In the mid lane, we're just seeing a lot of farm by the anti-mage. I am really happy. There's a stone gaze on top. They use the Sunder as well. Sepulcher so low. All you need is a Grave Chill and one or two autos. There's the Soul Assumption, though. That's not going to work. The Illusion moving in. Beat trying to buy space and time. Oh. The Illusory Orb and Jaunting away. They both will survive. Vector being asked to destroy a Wraith Band for that foul. Spectre looking for drums early on. Not as good of an item as it used to be, but still pretty solid for that hero, especially if you want to fight early. We they're looking to dive. To yeah, they're looking to dive onto him. There's a beautiful call down in the bottom lane. Miriam Webster with the morph. There's a rotation coming in. Sepulgur, the Medusa, no stone gaze available, but that's going to be a bouncing snake. Miriam Webster now very low on health, has to sit around these heroes to avoid that rocket barrage, but it's going to get stuck and dropped here. Now that the lone druid made a bit. Very unfortunate time. Gonna get hit by the rocket under his tower, but that's no problem for him. One of the things I'm really curious about for Goose Gang. Typically, you're gonna have heroes who have less things to focus on, especially in the early game, making a lot of the calls for your team, the rotations, the ganks, etc. But if you've got three micro heroes, who's gonna be doing that? Uh, I see a quick question on the uh, blocking camps front. Yeah? It was required to be sentries, correct? Uh, I do believe so. The rule said using sentries to block. We... I don't know that if that's a not, foul. That, for, that does not last for as long as a sentry. That is extremely true. I hadn't even thought about that factor. Might be something worth bringing observers, up. Observers last for six minutes and sentries last for eight. I appreciate just how deep your knowledge of errata in Dota goes. I'm a support main. <laughs> I have to know the word <laughs> times. <laughs> Levels are looking a little bit dicey for Goose Gang with... Uh, uh the kill on the bot lane, moving a in, taking question. out Lone Druid. It appears that there is stream a is network dead. error on the stream. Uh oh. Can we get an in game production pause? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. I'm calling that. I'm just waiting to make sure that it's okay. And boom. But uh, no, the levels are not looking so wonderful for. 
Give it a moment. All right, the stream looks like it is back online. So, Faf, are you with us? Yeah, I think when I lagged out, the stream went down for a moment, and so it's coming back with a slightly larger delay, almost five minutes now instead of four. Okay. But it should be okay from here on. Mm hmm All right. We'll go ahead and get this back started. I apologize to everybody for the uh, production issues. But, also, um... Uh, a quick question. Did we get a call regarding whether an OBS was sufficient to block that camp, or must it be a sentry? I'm... We do have a uh, gank moving in mid, though. Miriam Weebster getting caught out. Hitan bot ball lightning in, and that's going to be the entirety of Daddy's Nest. Just taking out the lycanthrope. Miriam Weebster at the ill graces of Daddy's Nest. Will the Goose Gang close ranks and bring the revenge? Or is this not much of a gang? We'll have to see. This is... I think a lot of this game really is going to come down to the AM and the Terror Blade at this point. We haven't seen towers getting pushed the way that they need to. Sure, there's one Radiant tire down. Ball Lightning in, taking the Arcane Tower Ring, down. or Arcane uh, Rune, sorry. But uh, they don't have any lockdown with these teams, so you're just going to end up having the Storm get away clean, but not the Medusa. Medusa using Stone Gaze, only getting but dying under tower. The last auto attack finishing her off as Stone Gaze finishes. Meanwhile, Terrorblade's meta is dropped in this fight, helping to try and get that middle tower pushed down. So this is some of what I'm glad to see happening. Hitan diving in. He's going to get melted oh, away no. by that mana void. That zip in left him too low. But uh, Cambo in the bot lane is counter pushing. They are going to get a tier one very slowly, though. That is not the best hero to push towers on. They might actually try and pick off the Spectre. Instead, no, they're just going to have the Terror Blade move to top lane, keep farming, and everybody else can try and occupy a little bit of the jungle since the mid tower is now gone. Mm -hmm. So there are two blocked camps on the Radiant side, and they just lost two towers on the top side of the map. So they're top tier one and they're mid tier one, which means that they're triangle is starting to become pretty heavily compromised and that also loses a lot of potential roche control this is absolutely terrifying as radiant cambo in a lot of trouble here there's three heroes in the area they're also calling the present in roche the tier one items have been handed over so we have an ironwood tree a trusty shovel a royal jelly and a broom handle but it's no loss this game since they can't use neutrals the teams have been neutered. That seems like a personal problem. Lone Druid getting yeah. picked off in the mid lane, just too far forward, not enough coverage. Easy pick off by Puck and Storm. We have two, three heroes, both of them, or two heroes in the bottom lane, able to push very hard. The Visage and the Lycanthrope. We, we may see them go for that pause. tier one. But another pause. Okay, a little yeah. bit of lag. So let's take the moment to look at some of the items and think about what you're thinking of their build, Kitty. Um, Medusa going for a Maelstrom at this moment. Good, bad. I don't know how I feel about this, honestly. Okay. We have a Sanj and Yasha for the Terror Blade. Do you like it or not? That I do like. Okay. Uh, Terror Blade, a little bit low on health, does have Sunder. We might see him try and move on to Sepulgur, but there is the anti-mage cookie in the top lane getting silenced by oh, puck no. they're gonna try and collapse on this maybe now storm spirit as well the out. blink out devirus caught out no oh, thunder no. available he gets caught in the electric AM board got out but that was pretty much throwing terrorblade under the bus then again terrorblade should not have been responding there this is also going to be really bad for the uh, Lone Druid, Benabits, sending the bear back in, but they're just able to chase him down. Now Morphing not able to finish off the cast point and will mm -hmm. lose the man and the bear. Okay, let's keep going with good and bad items as they take out the tier one top. Gyrocopter is looking for a veil. Kitty, good, bad. I'm down with that. That is something that complements some of his uh, team's strengths. You have some of the spell-based damage that comes out of Puck, as well as Storm, as well as Gyro himself. 
that is honestly a solid pickup. Like, I'm, I'm completely okay with that pickup, especially if you're treating Gyro as, you know, a little bit of this, like, teamfight alt bot and, like, throwing some stuns, yeah, mostly distract the enemy team, but having the freedom to just... For lack of a better way of putting it, blow his load, throw the uh, veil on them, and watch them cry. Bonus points for the fact that veil can be applied through spell immunity. Oh, that is a very good point. So, um, even, and because of the duration of the debuff, it means that even if they BKB, even if the enemy BKBs, so long, so, so it is dispellable, which means that if veil is applied before the BKB pops, it will be purged. But if okay. it's applied after BKB pop, then it is not dispelled unless they have another dispel available and will persist afterwards, meaning that they you have the option of two-phase engagements with that with amplified damage. All right. We do have a little bit of action in the bottom lane. Puck moving in. Dream Coil onto the Lycanthrope. Lycanthrope's going to snap it. Just trying to walk away using the Wolves. Does have the Morph now going into the Wolf form. Devirus, the Terror Blade, is in position. Metamorphosis up, trying to hit the Spectre. Spectre just going to walk back into the lane. Puck is out. Yeah, Beat and Cambo. They're getting slowed down by the reflection from the Terror Blade. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to be enough. Miriam Webster a little bit overextended. There's their TP rotation in call down. That's going to bring down Miriam. And now the Rocket Barrage doing a ton of damage. Terror Blade almost dead. Stunned forever mm -hmm. and will go down. This is going to be three dead heroes and some dead birds. That was a very bad death for Terror Blade. It was an exceptionally bad one. He... So he's got meta up. He wants to be doing things. Even if he's just using meta to farm, like go take a stack of ancients or something like that, a double stack of ancients, take you know, take a tower elsewhere, whatever. He wants to be active with that. And he just died in the middle of meta, partly because one of the things the Radiant does have, which ties into the veil from earlier, that is almost done, I believe, or possibly just acquired, it is in stash, is the spell-based damage, and in particular magical damage, that the Radiant is able to pump out, which is part of why Terrorblade is now queuing up a BKB, which feels really bad when you've done the S and Y build. That feels really bad. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think that Goose Gang can really fight until they have the Anti-Mage around, because he beats up on two of the heroes that are relatively important for these fights for uh, Daddy's... I cannot think the name all of a sudden. Daddy's Nest. I think that they need the Lycan, the Visage, and the Lone Druid to be a functional unit that are able to run around and do things, and that sometimes you have the AM show up, and sometimes you have the TB show up, but both AM and TB really kind of want to be doing the, like, nope, I'm on the opposite end of the map from other heroes, I want to be split-pushing towers if you give me the opportunity, and occasionally I show up and deck folks in a team fight. in particular since Terror Blade eventually, once he's like two to three items in, turns into a raid boss. Ball lightning in, they're gonna be moving onto the puck, onto the uh, puck and, you moved the puck in, I'm sorry, and onto the lone druid, but uh, everyone getting scared away, Hira pushed out of the fight, the Lycan is gonna go down after turning wolf, mm -hmm. Got the bear moving in. The man turns into a second bear. Bear's already dropping down. The man's gonna finish as well. Kira is caught on the visage in a dream coil. Does bring down the puck, but the haunt out there looking for the finish onto the visage. Soul assumption not there. Down goes visage. Still have Terror Blade and Anti Mage up, but both of them just off farming, not able to show up to that fight. They've pushed two lanes into the enemy tower. But you've got four heroes alive for the Radiant for Daddy's Nest, and they're going to try and put some pressure onto this mid tower. No. Oh my god, the mana void! Anime's just falling. showing up with the mana check. Dies in return, but shows up for the mana check, and Medusa did not pass. <laughs> We may see Devirus able to close in on Zidian. Zidian trying to juke around, TPing away. This is dangerous, but with Metamorphosis, we'll make it away. Now, caught in all of this silence and slow. He's got Sunder. Thunder he times in trouble. He times in trouble. He's going to get the last hit out with Meta. Now the illusion. The illusion just getting melted away. Metamorphosis makes him so strong as a hero, but Puck has magic. Puck is able to juke around. This is man fight down, and Devirus takes it. I will say, if it at this point there are enough like sources of magical damage that raindrops might not feel so good, but it, I, I really am wondering. We never saw raindrops on 
TB this game. I think part of it is just the frequency of damage that you're taking. Raindrops I really is good. I think that that would have been a good, <laughs> even just in the lane. Probably would have saved him from uh, one of those late lane fights. Homing missile out onto Lycan. No, the thing I'm thinking about raindrops is the cooldown on it means that uh, it's not going to prevent you from the constant yeah, burst. Later, Only no, against but like. It does save you some. True. Another homing Terra missile onto Lycan. So the thing to consider is Terra Blade. So each charge All down. drops 120. And that's going to be a dead beamster. Let's see, up to 120 from instances over 50 on the infused raindrops. When he was laning, oh. he was against things like the Medusa with the snake. Once again, the man turning into a bear and getting melted immediately. That's going to lose the spirit bear as well. But that mana void brings down two. And the Medusa Huge is they the on low spirit. mana. Puck jumping in. You've got no orb anymore, but doesn't it look does like the enemy wants to chase. It does keep from blink pursuing as easily. No, instead True. AM's going to switch into a farming pattern very seamlessly. I do like that save that just came in because otherwise that was probably going to be. Oh, no, no. anti-mage is back in. Leave. No mana void available though. Still 40 seconds on cooldown. Medusa doesn't even have enough mana to TP. Oh, that's really painful. Using the flying vision from these birds to scout out for the puck. Did they spot it? No, I don't think the bird vision radius was high enough. I think puck's just able to sit here. But I think cookie. that goes in my, my long running series, comedies in vision and warding right there. <laughs> Right up there with the uh, courier run-in that we had earlier in the tournament. They're going to be looking for the tier 2 towers here on Goose Gang. But I think that there's plenty of fight left in Daddy's Nest. You see the haunt come in, jumping that, in, Dream Coil. That does take out the AM. And now they're going to be looking for the Visage. They're going to be looking for the Lone Druid, trying to catch the man, the man running away. Bear not doing anything. It's so hard for this lone druid to do anything in these fights. Just having a hard time controlling both the man and the bear. Miriam Weebster getting caught out here. Down goes the crow. Down goes the lichen. Mm -hmm. Radiant coming out stronger in this team fight. Still trying to pursue and dive, maybe? I think that's about to be a bird lost. Uh, They're not doing anything with the birds. Okay, there's finally the birds. Kira's need to control them. Mm -hmm. But instead, 200 gold is going to go the way of Daddy's Nest. That's a lot of boost, especially for a Hitan bot, because you, uh, he doesn't have his crow right now, but uh, he's about to get Bloodstone, I think. One thing that I'm noticing, and I do not like this build decision, I wanted Orchid on that storm. I think that he's just focusing too much on some of the kills, and he's going to have a hard time scoring those kills until after he gets that Orchid, but the Bloodthorn, or the Bloodstone, I'm sorry, not Bloodthorn, is going to help I him out a lot. I think he's still too vulnerable. Lone Drew getting picked off in the top lane. No, I don't want him to do a Bloodstone. I want him having the ability to silence, etc. Especially because at that point, you can just... So, it is hard to maintain vision on the Terror Blade, given that at this point, there is a Necro 3 in play. Um, which is on Lycan. So, if Lycan is paying attention, the Radiant should not be allowed to place ground wards at this point. So, I do have one counterpoint. I'm sorry. I want to uh, go back to what you were talking about with the Storm it. Spirit. You say that he's still too vulnerable, but with the exception of the Anti-Mage, my question is vulnerable to what? He zipped in and died to the TB two fights ago. Yeah, to be fair, that was from a Sunder. Yeah, that's a Sunder. That's a, something that a TB does. That is part of raid boss dynamic. That is exactly okay. the kind of thing that you want to prevent. Fair, and the Orchid would help with that as well. So, uh, I guess that's a big thing. I'm still thinking of the Anti-Mage, and the fact that out of nowhere, you're going to go from full to zero on the Storm Spirit regardless. Unless you've got a Lincolns, or unless you basically just position well and don't have Anti-Mage anywhere near. Puck in danger in the bottom lane, getting stunned out, but managing to get the Illusory Orb into Ethereal Jaunt. I will say, though, and this is something that has also been brought to my attention, and I was three tangents ago going to come around to, is <laughs> the value of Lincolns this game. I want you to take a look at the Dyer's lineup for a moment and think really hard about what single target actions they have. That Soul Assumption. Pop a Lincolns. Soul Assumption. You can do it at zero charges when you start a fight and it has a five second cooldown. Yes, but that still requires coordination. And as we've seen throughout this tournament, getting 
making sure they have the coordination to pop a Lincoln's is in and of itself a barrier. Oh no, Miriam Weebster going for the outpost take when there's three Radiant heroes in the area, but that's gonna be a perfect bait. They're gonna move in, trying to get beat, not able to close in on it, trying to get Zidian, might get this, and now the chaos ensues. Look at everyone move in, so much damage from the Medusa. They get the Stone Gaze out, Anti-Mage using the Mana Void. Terribly does not have the, no, now has the Mana for Sunder. Didn't a moment ago, then he did. Um. And this is a dead Medusa. See, one of the things to consider though, it, remember in this logical extension thing, uh, foul on AM. AM accidentally picked up an item just now. Oh, he did. He has the broom handle. I think he got it during that fight. I think he act, there was a pile of three neutral items by the one camp. I think it was literally an accidental pickup there. But yeah, I, I think that's the case, but I'm not gonna, we've got to review the tape. They're gonna get the uh, tier one in the bot, or tier two in the bot lane out of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the BM and, and snarking going on aside. Um, AM did, upon it being brought to his attention, immediately drop that. Uh, he, quickening charm, you gotta drop that too. I think he's yep. collecting the tier three neutral items for the contract that they have. The tier oh, one is, is an accident, point. but he does intentionally so pick fine. up the tier threes as he farms. He's them. got a backpack at his all or send it back. They're moving in to the mid lane. He's on with the ball lightning in on the terror blade. Sunder is available, has the BKB, is caught though. Made it out. And now that is a huge, huge puck ulti. No, that and was. That was good on the Terror Blade. There was no way that fight was going to end well, getting the heck out of dodge. I feel like you could have used Sunder and then TP'd, but I, at the same time, you don't want to put that on cooldown. I don't think that that was safe. Ah, I it's a 40 second think. cooldown, though. No, it was not safe. And they're going to be moving in, looking for the Anti-Mage as well. That Dream Coil from Puck, it was a three-man Dream Coil that just Something demolished. To Something to consider. So Stone Gaze pierces, yeah? And we saw Stone Gaze dropped in that fight. He had to start TPing before Stone Gaze. That's a very fair point. Because three seconds duration and you're standing still when you're TPing. Okay, yeah, I can respect that. I'm sorry, two seconds of total time accumulated. So you had to really- You had to be there ahead of time. Yeah. Does uh, Stone Gaze go through? Yeah, it, it goes through spell immunity. So yeah, that's the only option you had. That makes yeah. sense. I respect no, the decision the making. The immediate TP response, it's ballsy, but I respect it, and that was the right decision there, I think. I wonder if we're going to see, like, a basher out of Cambo this game, or, um, I really he'd be the only one to take a basher on that team, but that would go through some of the, uh, BKB immunity for an instant stun, especially I when you get to Abyssal. I feel too bad about picking up Abyssal. Like, I think that's... I think that's a game. That's that's solid. But also, mm -hmm. we're seeing a completed diffusal with a Yasha, with a Drum of Endurance, and we're seeing the Manta that's in progress. I think there were just too many items out. True. There is the uh, one of the things that's a minor piece, but we're going to see turn into a pretty good advantage. Cookie moving in, trying to find the Storm Spirit. He's got the Blink available, the Ball Lightning. He's going to Ball Lightning away. There's the Stone Gaze. Anti-Mage turned to stone, Hitan going directly in front of him. Oh, this is a terrible mistake! Right That's gonna be the Mana Void! Oh now, the full Metamorphosis army of Terror Blade trying to take out Sepulger. Sepulger, no mana remaining, no life remaining. Down goes Sepulger. Zidian running away on the gyrocopter. He's gonna make it away with his life, but that's gonna be more buildings, I think. Cambo running into the trees, trying to use the speed boost. Slowed down, hit out of mana now. There's the homing missile onto the anti-mage, reflected, not going to be effective. Now it's starting to send back at the gyrocopter. They're going to take out these creeps. They have to cut the wave, though. There's no creeps there to hit the towers with. They're going to bring in the mid wave instead and take the tier two. Oh I was certain the AM was dead there. I was 100% certain, but that stogie is elapsed just in time for me to get the spell shield off. 
The other thing, too, is that there's no damage coming out of from the Storm Spirit. I'm really feeling the lack of Orchid that you were talking about. He's not even going Orchid now. He is going Bloodthorn into BKB. Bloodstone BKB? Yeah, no, I... I think that, honestly, if early in the game, even understanding that a Lycan is going to go for Orchid, or not for, uh... I'm going to cut you off here. That's a call down, and an Electric Vortex will bring down the Lycanthrope. Now, another three-man Dream Coil going to catch Kira and Davi. Yeah, Koki blinking in, trying to get a kill off of this. They have the Stone Gaze out, going to catch the Terror Blade, but he is so hard to bring down. Sunder not available. They're going to finish him off. Good turnaround. Three heroes dead on the side of Goose Gang. Gyro surviving with literally 20 health. <laughs> No, that was... So even understanding that Lycan is going to go Necro 3, that there are universal constants. This is right up there with AM going Battle Fury. It will yes. happen. So even understanding that, I think that if Storm had rushed Orchid this game and used the vision advantage, especially since they were shutting down the Lycan, to just repeatedly kill things like the Terror Blade, you still have the AM to contend with, but at that point, you're... You're giving yourself time. You're decoupling power spikes. The tier three swap has been denied. Daddy's Nest refuses to tier three, tier three swap. I think they're still bitter about the server. <laughs> Not only that, I think they're just bitter about the game. I think their faith in themselves is relatively low. They think they're going to need a small miracle to win this one. So they're just going to go in and try and end it with some pure raw Dota. Well, the they kill. liquefy the druid again. Um... Use Dream Coil forward. They're moving in on the mid lane now. Cambo caught out. There's a dead Medusa from the oh. Anti-Mage's Mana Void. They're trying to take down Cambo. So hard to catch him. There's the Haunt as well going on the other side of the line. But the Basher from Cookie. Cookie going in. Is... Hitan moved in. There's no Mana... There is a Mana Void off cooldown. All you need to do is get his health a little bit... His mana a little bit lower. Zidian getting beat up by the Anti-Mage. The Abyssal onto Hawk. This is devastating. Goose Gang is really feeling it. They're out for blood. I'm trying to think of good, like, gang-related jokes or puns, but I can't think of anything that's classy. No, this is... This is devastating. And we are seeing the whole idea that Dyer's comp for... For all that, once again... The Lycan and the Lone Druid are having really painful games. Oh no, he's on. Getting picked, uh -oh. Storm getting picked off on the high ground. And they've oh, got the, the buybacks. buybacks coming out. Homing Missile is going to be going deep. Is he going to notice it? And is he going to be able to use the Spell Shield in time? The Terror Blade, full raid boss mode. They've got the silence on Terror Blade, but he's got BKB. They've got the silence on Miriam Weebster, the Lycan. Not the biggest impact in these fights. The Yules out onto Zidian's Gyrocopter. They're just trying to cover Devirus as much as they can. Lincoln's popped on Sepulger. Using the Stone Gaze. That's not going to be enough. Even using the Sunder Devirus on the High Health Medusa and going to walk out of here. He's walking out of Mordor. By the way. This could be bad for Devirus getting silenced. He's trying to go in. There's a Ghost Scepter, so important for the Gyrocopter. Now with the Homing Missile, that's going to be a little bit of extra damage and more importantly, a stun. The Illusion just trying to hold on a little bit and the Homing Missile brings down the Terror Blade. Devirus just a little bit too low. Cambo diving deep in the river by the Roche Pit, getting rooted by the bear and suddenly almost killing... Kira with that diffuse or the diffraction. So, but, uh. Go ahead. Here's one of the problems I'm noticing. So, we have, you know, Puck has a blink dagger. That's great. Working on eggs. That's great. We have a storm spirit with a bloodstone and a BKB. We have Gyro, who's got a Yules and a Glimmer Cape and a Ghost Scepter. Plenty of good support items, plus a veil to amplify damage, but. We have Spectre with Diffusal Manta. We have a Medusa with a Maelstrom Lincolns. Where's the damage? 
that's precisely what I'm thinking, is they're just, they haven't had damage, and it's been really evident by the Storm Spirit trying to go in and just getting eviscerated every single time. Puck going in, they snatch the Aegis! Yeah, Puck got the kill, but Cookie gets the Aegis. That sure is a feather in your cap for this game, but this is part of the problem, though. So, like, they went and doubled down on some of the magical damage stuff to be able to kill the Terror Blade, right? But now the Terror Blade is sitting there on an S and Y and a Satanic, and they don't have the damage profile. They don't have the disable profile either. I think one of the problems is if you're going to give the enemy team Terror Blade and Anti Mage, yes, it's going to be very difficult for them to come online, but you have to realize that you're not going to have the best heroes to bring them down. And they are exact opposites in terms of what they're good against. Anti Mage going in, Mana Void is going to be out, and this time Stone Gaze going to be really bad for Lone Druid. Anti Mage, no mana, caught inside of everything. There's the homing missile as well. Down he goes. That's going to be a lot of damage as well onto the Visage. Too. And here, the second life for Anti-Mage. They are just melting Sepulchre's Medusa. Cambo trying to hold on, do any damage that he can, beat on the back line, just dodging some of that damage. But that is going to be a dead Medusa, I think. One more hit, just cutting them around forever. Oh my god, the Electric Vortex! Down goes Anti-Mage! Medusa that lived! That was a good pick. But you still got the TB to deal with. It's not over yet. No, the Terror Blade's feeling the fine. Silence. They got the silence, though. He's not able to mm -hmm. use. He's not able to sunder. Also, that was during meta, right? Yeah, that was mm -hmm. a monumental fight. No, no, I'm the sorry. Uh, saved the fight there. Meta was just off cooldown at the end of that, but uh, it okay. was during for the most of that fight. Okay. That was a monumental fight. That is just showing that there is still some life left in Daddy's Nest. They've got to find a way to push. Yeah, Medusa, not the best pushing hero, can kill creeps a lot, has a little bit harder time with towers. Spectre, same thing. Gyrocopter, same thing. All of these heroes, not the best at killing towers, but really good at clearing creeps on the way to them. This Lycan's looking for an Assault Curious. That's going to be devastating with both the Terror Blade and the, uh, well, really everybody on the Dire Side team. If you get that Assault Curious, it's just going to make for an amazing game for them. Spectre does have Basher at this point, but... Storm's I'm... looking for that Aghanim Scepter. That's going to give him the AoE Electric Vortex. Maybe that's going to be the kind of thing they need to get the lockdown on the Anti-Mage or on that Terror Blade. I don't know. Like, Especially because it will pull them all to face him, and if he's right next to the Medusa, that's a Stone Gaze setup. One of... I, so, so I'm... I'm quiet for a moment because I'm going through and reading a bunch of these abilities again. Mm -hmm. I'm double checking my memory on a lot Smoke of Smoke out of the mid lane. I still don't think it's enough damage. The only thing that I'm thinking is if they get a great stone gaze, the damage amp from stone gaze will help a lot. Medusa but is queuing up a rape here, by the way. Has it been They're moving in. They They're gonna like catch the Storm Spear. Down he goes to a Mana Void instantaneously. Mm -hmm. And without Storm, he's got buyback available, but you're he's missing the mid rack. He's got a 10 second BKB, he's got a, an 11 charge Bloodstone, a bottled regen rune. But if he's gonna buy back and zip in, it's gotta be a, a very decisive moment. There's the buyback. He's gonna zip in. He's going on the <laughs> Terror Blade. And on the bear, takes out the man, takes out the bear. They're going deep now. He's going to take out the Visage. Visage with Pipe has a little bit of extra power. Soul Assumption not going out, but more than enough damage from the Anti-Mage and from Lycan. Satanic is popped on the Terror Blade as he is 1v2-ing against the Puck and the Spectre on the top lane. Yeah, get a little bit of assistance from the Anti-Mage, and mm -hmm. that's going to be enough to bring down Spectre. Now they're just going to hit buildings, ignoring the Puck. Miriam Weebster staying on the puck. They're going to be trying to take him down. They're just looking to make space. Sepulger coming back in on the Medusa. Did they use buyback? Doesn't look like it. I don't think Medusa died. 
Ah. Uh, it appears so. And that means oh. that the Lincolns does pop. They're going to be moving in on Medusa. No he mana remaining. Lincolns popped. Stone gaze on cooldown. And no this is going to be the end of the game, I think. So the NA team on their home turf will take the semifinals game and go on to the grand finals. I'm so sorry to say, but this may be the end of Daddy's Nest. Still trying to fight to the death, but everyone's targeting the Ancient. That's going to be mm -hmm. it. GG is called Goose Gang is your victor. Not I. Commemorative Dota crash I... to celebrate the occasion. <laughs> there were so many good fights right at the end of that, and it, you saw some of the coordination things like you know, Stone Gaze going out when Storm buys back to aggressively zip in to catch people in it, and good plays like that. But I think that part of this was a crisis of damage, but also that clearly there's familiarity on the other team with some of the heroes that they've got. Like, for all that you saddled them with a druid and a visage and a lichen that were really struggling through a lot of the game, although still making a strong show of it. In particular, shout out to the visage. Um, You just had these two juggernauts coming in at the end. Uh, you no, I don't think they were juggernauts. I'm pretty sure that was Terrorblade and Anti-Mage. But with that being said... um. We are going to go to a quick break as we prepare for the Grand Finals. So thank you, everybody, and we'll be back shortly. <laughs> 